Hi, it's David Ask the Electrician, and today we're going to wire up an electric water heater. We're going to be covering making the connections at the water heater. Whether you're putting in a brand new water heater or a replacement water heater, we'll show you how to wire it up. We'll also be taking a look at the location for the water heater heating element. In case you just have a bad heating element that needs to be replaced, where that location is and how to access that. And as with any electrical wiring project, we want to locate the circuit breaker, identify it, turn it off, and put a note at the panel that electrical work is being done on the circuit. Typical circuit breaker for a water heater looks something like this. It's typically a two pole, 30 amp, 240 volt circuit breaker. If you're an electrician working on this project, you will see a circuit breaker wiring inside the panel, something like this. And typically you will see number 10 wire which is connected to a two pole 30 amp circuit breaker. At an older home where there's a fuse box, you may see a disconnect similar to this, where it provides the 240 volt circuit to the water heater. It will have two fuses. And in this case, the disconnect needs to be turned off before doing any wiring with the water heater. This will cover your typical or conventional 30 or 40 gallon water heater, which requires a 30 amp 240 volt circuit. The typical circuit for this water heater, of course, is a, as we said, a 30 amp 240 volt circuit. This is typically a 10 gauge copper wire, two conductors with a ground, and this is a typical circuit for an electric water heater at a home. If you want to double check the specifications of your specific water heater, take a look at the nameplate information or the label that is attached to your specific water heater, which will give you more information about the watts and the electrical circuit requirements. So with an electric water heater at a home, we typically have a power supply coming into the top area of the water heater where there is a junction box built into the top of the water heater and this is where the wiring connections are made. So if you're replacing an old water heater that is defective, you will notice in some cases that there is an external ground screw at the top of the area where the power supply comes in. And of course, this will need to be taken apart so that it can be reused for the new connection to the replacement water heater. And if you're installing a brand new circuit to a new water heater, typically, again, it's going to be a number 10 gauge copper wire, two conductors in a ground, three wires total. We typically bring this circuit into the area where the water heater is, it usually comes in from above, but it can come in from any other direction as well. The wiring is protected with either electrical metallic tubing, EMT, or a electrical flex. In this case, we see both, where the 10-2 with ground cable is run out of the ceiling into a half-inch EMT. The jacket of the 10-2 wire is removed so that we just have the conductors going through the EMT and then it transitions into a flex connection. And then from the flex, we have the wire going through and going out of the flex where it will be connected to the water heater. So we notice with the new water heater that we have a junction box built into the top area of the water heater. Typically, we've got two wires, and one is a red, one is a black, 
And then there is a screw terminal built into this junction box. It is a green ground screw, and this is where the ground wire is attached. If you discover that your existing wiring does not look like this, in a lot of cases you might see a black wire and a white wire. You may want to test the wire, but if it was an existing 240 volt water heater, typically that white wire was being used as a power conductor, one of the lines of voltage coming to the water heater. So it's a great idea to identify that wire with either red tape. If you have an existing water heater that you're replacing and your wiring does not look like this, it is always a good idea to double check and test the wires to make sure which wires are being used for the 240 volts and accept the separate wire that is being used for the ground wire. So now let's take a look at the water heater. And in most cases, we have two different locations where there are heating elements. And stay tuned, at the end of this video, you'll see how to get a download resource that will help you wire it right and avoid the most common electrical mistakes in a home. Okay, we're looking at a new water heater. This water heater at the top half of it has a cover which gives access to the top heating element. And then there's another cover at the bottom half of the water heater that gives you access to the bottom heating element. So in this case, there is a styrofoam cover after the metal covering is removed. And then there is a plastic safety cover that goes over the electrical wiring area where there are more connections for the water heating element and the heating controls. At this point, you will notice there is a control that has a red reset button. There is another dial that shows the temperature setting. And then below that, you will see the heating element. So in some cases, if a heating element goes bad, the reset button will be popped out and it has to be reset, but if the heating element is completely bad and needs to be re replaced, then the water heater has to be drained, the power has to be turned off, of course, and then a new element is installed. A heating element can go bad in the water heater if, for example, there are frozen water lines and the water inside the water heater is depleted, so there is no water to take its place, and the heating elements are trying to work, and so that causes the heating elements to overheat, and they can, of course, become defective and burn themselves out. And in that case, the old heating element needs to be re removed, and then another heating element has to be installed. So it's important that we get the exact same heating element to replace the existing one. It has to be the same voltage and the same wattage, the same length. Everything has to be the same. And of course, the mounting on the outside has to match the mounting of the original water heater element that is being replaced. In many locations, it is required that there is a safety strap that is installed around the water heater. Usually it's two straps. They're installed and anchored to a wall securely. This prevents the water heater from moving around in the case of an earthquake or any other type of hazard, which might damage the electrical connections coming in and of course the water connections coming into the water heater. So come on by, ask the electrician, pick up your top 10 electrical mistakes and how to avoid them, and also sign up for my free newsletter for electrical tips, which comes out almost every week. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, 
And I thank you very much for watching and have a great day.